How's it going? I'm that ginger photographer. I'm in my new studio. First video in the new studio. Can you believe it? Got my IKEA furniture, obviously my first priority. Other than that, haven't done anything else. This video is gonna be all about food photography and it's gonna be about one thing that I do on nearly every single food photography job that I get. It's something that's really simple to do and it'll help your pictures stand out from the rest. I talk in other videos all about composition and getting your lighting right and this one action is simpler than those. It's just about adding that human element to your photos. Getting a well lit and well composed image of a dish or a drink always looks great, but adding that human element just helps those pictures stand out that little bit more. And it also helps you deliver a good variation of images to your client as well. I'm not talking about putting full people in a picture, but just using the hands. And it's really simple to do, and even my sausage fingers can do it. Whenever I'm on a photo shoot and I've got all of my static images out of the way, I just grab one of the members of staff or somebody who's in the restaurant, and I just ask them if I can use their hands for a couple of minutes. It sounds really creepy, but they're usually up for it. Just to put them at ease as well, I also tell them I'm not gonna be using the faces in the pictures. I don't know why I'm cutting off the head there, but I'm not gonna be using the faces, John Cena. But by doing that, you're putting them at ease as well, because they know it's just gonna be the hands then. So whether it's cheersing, holding, cutting, pouring, there's so many things you can do with hands. But whatever it is, Using those actions in your food photography helps just add another dimension to the images. So first up, I wanna talk about chasing or clinking glasses, whatever you wanna call it. When you do this in your pictures, you're not only adding that human element, but you're also adding a bit of fun as well. For example, if you've got two different cocktail bars on Instagram, one showing well-lit, well-composed images of cocktails on their own, or you've got a second bar, which is showing four cocktails being clinked together or cheersed, you'll know that that second bar is a little bit more fun and trendy, like me. So grab a member of staff, grab a couple of members of staff, and just ask them if they wouldn't mind just chasing some drinks for literally two minutes and just snap away as they do it. They don't have to do it full speed, they can do it nice and slow. Remember, these aren't moving pictures, so nobody knows if they're just holding their drinks there for five minutes. Well, now they do, because I've said it and it's on YouTube. So second up is a little action that I like to call knife and fork cutting up food technique, and it really rolls off the tongue. And if you haven't already guessed from that clever title, somebody's gonna be cutting up food, you using a knife and fork, science. This is really simple to do, but it's also really effective. If you just grab one person, a member of staff, and ask them to cut up the food with a knife and fork, once you've photographed it static, because once this is cut up, you can't go back and photograph it. This is a great action to use because there's so many different variations you can do with the pictures. You'd be surprised how many different pictures you can get of somebody cutting up food. You can shoot over the shoulder, you can shoot them front on, you can shoot them side on, you can shoot them from above, you can shoot them from below if it's a glass table if you want to. But however you do it, just keep snapping away as they're cutting up the food. And again, tell them to do it nice and slow. There's nothing worse than somebody rushing through the photo. You can just compose that picture, tell them to hold it where you need them to hold it. You're only getting the hands in, so if they're pulling a dumb expression, it doesn't matter. By doing this, you're just adding that story to the pictures again. You're adding that little bit more dimension and you're telling a story with the food. Even if that story is, once upon a time, somebody cut up the food with a knife and fork, the end. So gravy, drinks, custard, juice, water, milk, what else can you pour? Cream, stuff on cakes, anything you can think to pour, we can photograph it being poured onto food, not cement, like edible stuff. But all you need for this is one person to be your pourer. Bring somebody with you to be your pourer, whatever you wanna do, grab a member of staff and get them to hold that jug up nice and high. But remember, you only get one shot at this because once it's poured all over the food, that dish is ruined, not ruined, it's still a nice dish, but you can't pour it again, otherwise it'll be swimming gravy, not a bad thing. If you're using flash to get pouring images, you can freeze that action. Using a high enough shutter speed, you'll be able to freeze those little droplets and freeze that pour, and that'll look amazing as well. So be a pourer and add those human elements to your pictures. Mmm, tasty. Next up is holding. Holding the food up to camera always looks amazing only works with dishes that you would normally hold. You don't want somebody fingering some steak up to camera or trying to grab some soup. So for this, use things like burgers or sandwiches. Use the types of food like burgers and sandwiches. When people see pictures of those, they know that they need to be held to be eaten. Unless you're a weirdo and you cut up your burgers with a knife and fork. So get your static images, get your well-lit images of the burger, but after you've done that, demolish it, smash it up, hold it up, cut it in half, hold it up, bite it, hold it up, or get somebody to hold it up. And then just picture it as much as you can. And you're just showing layers, you're telling a story. People know it's gonna be messy if you've got cheese running down your fingers. Not your fingers, whoever's holding it. 
be weird if you were covered in cheese while taking pictures. But add that human element again and it'll just improve your pictures so much. I actually had a job today, I'll include some footage. Not only did the hold it, the pod, hold and paw, we're mixing two actions together now. It's going crazy up in here. These are my four go-to techniques whenever I'm on a food photography job. And if you wanna see how I work when I'm photographing food on location, check out this video. Hit that like and I'll see you in the next one. Love you, bye.